I'll quickly mention this. Um, the reason why my setup's changed is because I think this will be helpful for me providing more value to you, and it'll also be helpful for my video to actually see people. So that way, because like the thumbnail looks better, like the thumbnail looks better, then you get more clicks, blah blah blah, so on and so forth. So I figured I'd put that here, so that way people understand that this that's the main purpose for this, and also. It'll allow me to reach more people to provide more value, obviously. That's the whole point of this channel. So, with that being said, I'm going to stop talking about this now. And I'm going to make a cool little weird transition. And we're going to go right into the video. I like that. I like the transition. But, anyways. This is talking about the youth advantage, obviously. And why does this matter to anybody? And what significance is there for us to actually know about it besides mommy and daddy telling you so? For for, for first measure, I want to talk about each perspective, like two groups of audiences and why it's important to each of them specifically. Now, for an older audience that might be watching this, it is better for you because... You, it will help you understand generational generational culture and it will give you a deeper understanding as of why things change so much especially in like language and in like I guess trends per se like you know like 80s trends compared to like trends in 2010 and with these with this it'll help you obtain a better knowledge and hopefully more relaxation towards any major cultural changes that are happening and obviously i'm not saying don't worry about the things that are like re like dangerous but don't worry about the things that are changing because you think that they should be your way and not their way and for me saying that there's some importance to it because i want to make sure that because obviously as a more experienced person doing due to being an older audience, you probably have a deeper understanding of how society works and you want it to work in your way where it's in a more secure way that you've always seen it as, which is fair. I mean, we're, we're probably going to do it eventually too. So, But if you take at least a few moments to understand that the other side is just going through a cultural shift, it will help you negate some of that resentment towards younger people in certain scenarios, if that makes sense. Because at the end of the day, everyone's just trying to be nice to each other, and no one actually knows how. So, yeah, that's that part. And then for the younger audience that will be watching this, I want you to I want you to listen in because the advantage that allows you to succeed much more quickly than older people has nothing to do with your physical, has very little to do with your actual mental like with any like mental quality per se because even old people still have it it's just when you recognize this key that i'm going to bring to you later in the video when you're younger it allows you to learn things quicker and in a more quality way that simply older people can't replicate anymore because it's just it's just the ability degrades over time and so First of all, let's understand some characteristics of this actual key, right? It is unlocked by understanding a certain method to finding what you're good at and structuring yourself so you can gain the ability to get into a workflow where you're able to put a lot of concentration and improve, like, and be able to improve many times over in whatever niche, field, experience, venture you're trying to go into in life, relationships, yourself, maybe your food, it really, it can go anywhere. And so the first way to apply this, to, to apply these uh, characteristics is exploration. What I mean by exploration is not for you to go and do drugs. That's not, that's not what I'm trying to 
excuse you for doing. What I'm trying to tell you is to go, hmm, to go ride the skateboard and then get injured, right? You have the time to do that a lot more than older people do. And I mean that on a literal level too. But more importantly, the, the mental level of, oh yeah, I should go try this thing even if I don't like it or if I, my opinion says otherwise, I should at least give it some effort of my own to see what it's like. If you give the other people that ability, it'll really help you cultivate some skill set into your future that will be profound in your development and throughout the rest of your life and maybe even pass it on to your kids. So, with that being said, let's see here. Yeah, so what I want you to do with this exploration is to find something and put genuine effort into it, right? So it can't be like something that you're like, oh, I'm doing it because that guy said so. That's just not, you're going to fail. Simple. What's not going to happen, though, is if you actually, or that's not going to happen if you take the time to be like, okay, I actually really like race cars, so I'm going to see what I can do in the racing industry. Okay. Figure out some weird thing you like in the racing industry and then try to do it and reach out to people. Just try it. Like, it doesn't really care. We're going into a generation where it doesn't really care about your age. It just cares about your experience because there's consistently now 18, 19, 20-year-olds who are out there providing a lot of value to people and... I think a lot of people are starting to wake up to the idea that younger people can provide quality too. So, and obviously, obviously you have to find the right individual to do it because if you just find a 20-year-old drug addict who happens to be really good at whatever he's doing, like, obviously those two don't match very well. So, agreeably, you wouldn't hire him. I wouldn't either. So, find what you want to do and... When you want to, and or at least what you think you want to do, and then put at least about four months of effort in for a quantitative measure. I'll say at least four months of like almost habitual practice into it. Obviously, it takes a little bit to form a habit, so on and so forth. I get that. Obviously, there's some exceptions too. If you're disabled, okay, right? Like within within the standard average, the average um within average. Uh, deviation right so take this four months of time and i want you to observe what happens to you at the end of the four months you can click off this video go four months come back if you wish or if you already have something you could just follow along for the rest of it and i'll explain it to you and what this youth advantage actually is if it applies to you obviously if you're like 75 years old i mean great you're watching this but this is about the youth advantage so not exactly the right audience but if you want to watch it, I'm not complaining. So, welcome. <laughs> but with that being said, what you should notice is you had this ability to gain a skill in such a short amount of time. I mean, it's really four months. Like, four months is not that long. If you understand that you were able to cultivate the skill on the at least average employee level, or even like higher quality, or even like a CEO level, anywhere between there. That would hopefully get your mind to start thinking about how much can I actually do within three years, right? Okay, now you take that four month thing they just did and you extrapolate it to three years and now you're making $7 million. Million, not billion. But maybe billion. I don't know. I can't really tell. I can't tell your future. I'm not like one of those weird psychic people right so yeah, and by the way they can't tell you the future they just give out genuine they just give out general statements and hope it applies to you you didn't hear that from me though anyways <laughs> so uh after that when you when you start to notice this ability you'll start to understand that okay i need to go find that thing that's good that that resonates with me pronto so i so you start scouring 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 that's what i want you to be able to start culminating and start 
developing within yourself as a younger person, preferably. Now, in reality, what I mean by younger person is what I call the first trimester of your life. Since a lot of people are living to 90 now, the first trimester would be from a year one to year 30. And that's because the prefrontal cortex, the thing that that develops and has a indirect correlation with the key that lets you remember all these things, it really dissipates when you're right around 25 plus or minus two years due to certain rates of development, so on and so forth. So if you start to know what know exactly when it's like dropping for you which you'll be able to tell trust me it'll provide you with a lot more knowledge and a better understanding of a time clock that also i guess to mention this it's not like it drops like this it actually more goes like this it just kind of slowly declines over time rather than going immediately down into the plummet hole of nothing. It doesn't do that. You'll be fine. So if you're like 35, trust me, you can still learn. You're okay. Take a deep breath. But anyways, so now I'll give you, now, or now that you've explored something, now that you have put in some type of effort and you understand this ability and you want to go culminate it into some other skill that you think would be really desirable for you in your life. Now you can start to understand the key, which is neuroplasticity. And to note this before we begin, for the older audience from earlier, if you're still here, the cultural generation is, or what I mean by this is when an entire generation of, of people change culture very quickly, it's because of this very high level of neuroplasticity within all younger people. So if if you're wondering that if there's something wrong with other with the older people with sorry. If you're wondering that there's something wrong with the younger people, you're probably slightly overestimating it. And a lot of it is actually just neuroplasticity going on in the brains of me, my I guess like to put it like my age group. And so on, and you get the idea from there. So, what is neuroplasticity, and more importantly, what does it do? So, the best way to explain neuroplasticity is it's this ability to be able to adapt neurologically to circumstances which you place yourself under, or which are of enough difficulty for a signal to go to your brain to cause change. And to put this in even more detail, it's the idea of like, okay, you don't know how to cook spaghetti, right? You don't really know when the pasta's done. So the best way to start learning is to start cooking it. And obviously you can get a good guide by like looking up how to cook it. Oh, it gets you eight minutes, okay. So you look at eight minutes and then maybe maybe you don't really know how the taste test works for like for pasta and like what's like too much, what's too little, what's in the cooked range. There's also like a cooked range where like you could have like a soft kind of cooked or like a harder kind of cooked noodle. So sometimes it gets a little difficult to understand when when it's in each category. And that's where neuroplasticity would come in and say, okay, well, we'll try this thing out. If this doesn't work, I'll remember that. And then your brain will change and be like, okay, I can't put it in for another 30 seconds. That'll make it burnt and unable to be used. Sorry, I thought I heard something. So now with that knowledge, right, we can apply this to a more generalized concept of where whatever skill that you're learning over time, what happened was neuroplasticity went on your brain and it triggered a different set of neurons, which basically told you, okay, this is the right way to do that thing. And this is how you mentally do it or physically do it, depending on whatever it is. What I'm not saying to put this in, to like 
get this out of people's heads. I'm not saying that you're meant to learn everything and it's actually possible to learn everything in one human being. It is not. I repeat, it is not possible to remember all things in one person. You have a limited amount of neurons. You have a limited amount of neuroplasticity. Use it in a manner where you know you're putting your mental energy into something you're willing to culminate for the rest of your life. Okay? Really want to drive that point home so that way people don't get confused or people don't get too excited or people don't think or people so that way people don't think that this is like an easy street to do whatever, right? So having I'm sorry, I'm just like keep hearing people and it's like freaking me out. Hold on. Okay. Sorry about that. Just things things freak you out sometimes when you're home alone. So anyways, where was I? Oh, what does my post do? Okay. Right. So now so now the big question, how do I harness this in my daily life? And a great example that I have set up for this is go somewhere and find a person you want to find a person that you like, like that you enjoy or find someone that you kind of admire. I guess you could use admire as the right word, but I don't really like the word admire, so whatever, my predisposition on that. But you find this person that you would be willing to pick up some traits from. And then what you want to do is identify the traits. Maybe they're, I don't know, maybe, maybe they have clarity of thought. And I want you to practice that clarity of thought with something you already know, right? So maybe you already know how to put Legos together really well. So what you do is you practice your clarity of thought by teaching someone or describing to someone something about Legos. Then that gets that little neuron fired and it's like, oh, okay, I need to change so I can do this because it'll probably be a struggle for you at first. That's the key. The key is that it struggles you because if it doesn't struggle you, then that means that you're already adapted to it and you don't really need neuroplasticity to come in as much. Now, you still do need it a little bit, but if you are if you want to make sure you're really learning the skill, you want to make sure that it is, it is always at kind of the same level of challenging that it was when you were first starting off. Now, obviously, you're going to know better and get more experience, but being able to put yourself under that same amount of pressure and that same amount of like mental challenge will allow your brain to really develop in a way where not only do you actually gain a lot of knowledge, you also gain a lot of confidence in being able to discern the unknown from the known in your own mind. Now, obviously, being able to practice these traits by displaying it to other people would be the best method because it really adds on that purpose of, okay, I need a change to do this to do X, Y, and Z to make my point clear. All right. Just thinking about what I want to end this on. Oh, yeah. Forgot about this. So a quick point that I want to bring up before I end this is that every time you revert to the older version of whatever act that is, right? So maybe... This is more of like if you're more developed in that skill, okay? So let's say you really know how to do a push-up and you're really trying to make sure that your elbows are at 45 degrees and not like sticking out like this. Like maybe you used to do push-ups like this, but now you do push-ups like this and you really want to make sure you do push up like this to activate the chest, right? So every time you revert to the older version of yourself, right? Every time you revert to this, immediately follow it with this. Because then that's also triggering the brain to say, okay, sorry, that previous move was incorrect. 
let's fix it to the thing that's currently happening, which is this, right? Pushing elbows 45 degrees. So, and the reason why I have such confidence in knowing this is because of the, because of the podcast Andrew Huberman made. I watched it through. Uh, it was the one about habits. I believe it's number seven of Huberman Labs. Don't quote me on that. But I remember him saying something along the lines of, don't quote me on this either. You break old habits by rewiring neural circuits to fire different neurons. What this is saying is that when maybe you, you get the feeling to do habit A or action A, or in this case, you get the feeling to um, like try to go this bad way of whatever your skill is, you can take that and go and learn the new, better version of that skill and then immediately apply it every time you do the bad version of that skill. So maybe every time, for example, like I'm recording this video, if every time, like I don't slouch back, but like let's say my problem is that I would slouch back a lot and now I have to talk louder to match it with the video. But every time I slouch back, maybe this would be the mistake, I come back up. Because then that's telling the brain, okay, this is bad, this is good. And you have to do it in a way where you replace immediately after whatever action you did. So, the logic behind the youth advantage is that it is a sim simple understanding of neuroplasticity it will give you the key to not only learn things faster than older people, but to be able to adapt much quicker, to be able to put in the time for the valuable skill that can be seen as pro not only profitable or successful, but also be seen as something you can pass on for the rest of your life. And that can provide a lot of value to yourself, your kids, so on and so forth. As long as you put the time into the right efforts at the, the right efforts with a good amount of consistency. And most importantly, you got to really have a work ethic. So that way, when you have this work ethic, you're actually able to do the things consistently and get the reward that you deserve. So thank you for listening. And as always... We're here to help us help them. Have a good one.